My name is Darcy, and today we are going to learn how to loom knit a ball. Now, if you haven't noticed, I happen to be the author of Knitting for Kittens, Learn to Loom Knit by Making 25 Cat Toys. This book I wrote and basically created a lot of the toys that are in the book, and all of them use this loom. Let's talk about what you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need is this flower loom. Now this is a 12 peg loom. I, you see I've already numbered the, the pegs that it, I do for any kind of instructional so it makes it easier for when I'm teaching you. It comes with a loom hook and a little plastic needle like this. That's pretty much all you're going to need except for yarn. And you're just going to need one skein of yarn. I like to use the Bernat Soft and Chunky. Uh, or Charisma yarn. And I believe the Charisma is sold only at Michael's. You can find the Bernat Soft and Ch Softy Chunky a lot of places. They don't have a lot of colors in the stores, but they do have a lot of colors if you find it online. And this yarn, Bernat, is a super bulky. It's at the lower edge of the super bulky. The Charisma is actually considered bulky, but it's kind of on the higher end of bulky. If you don't use one of these yarns, I recommend that you kind of make sure that the yarn that you get is thicker and very strong. Like literally pull as hard as you can on it to make sure it doesn't snap so that the yarn is strong enough. And I'll talk about more about how to make sure your, your yarn and your toy is cat safe as we continue. But beyond the scissors, and we'll talk, and a few things to stuff it, but the things that you can use to stuff it, you'll have in your house. So don't worry about that yet. First thing we have to do is make a slip knot. Grab the yarn between your thumb and forefinger. Wrap it all the way around. Kind of grab the yarn again. Then from the underside, this is always hard to get it on camera, you're gonna just tuck the yarn so you have a little, see how you have a loop here? Pull your fingers out and grab the two ends of the yarn. So you've got the end here and the end here. And then the loop, pull on the loop. And you'll see it creates a little bit of a knot. Then take this knot and this on your loom is called the anchor peg. And you, cause you're gonna anchor the yarn to it. Pull on the ends. And you've secured your yarn. Okay, now we're going to do the drawstring cast on. This is a really quick and easy cast on to do. So grab the yarn in your in your hand and you're going to start by going up and around peg one. So you run behind and then you go in front of peg two and then behind peg three, in front of peg four, behind peg five, and you continue doing that going in front of the even pegs, behind the odd pegs, until you get to the end. Then you're gonna go behind peg one a second time. Kind of with your fingers, kind of push this yarn down because you need to be have space above them, above this yarn, to do the next step. So now we're going to kind of just hold the yarn above the yarn, the first round of yarn, and then you're gonna go from the bottom, kind of Grab this yarn with your hook and loop it up over the, and again, so you see how I'm doing that, just grabbing it from the, and I loop it up over the peg. Continue doing that for the even ones, the odd ones. Don't need to have that done. You only need to do it where you see the two strands of yarn as you're going around. Okay, now we're going to go in front of peg one this time and we're gonna start loom knitting on peg two. All right, let's talk about how to do a knit stitch. Now there are actually four different ways to do a knit stitch, and then there's also the purl stitch. I'm not gonna show you all of those today, I'm only gonna show you how to do the U-wrap stitch. 
I like the U-Wrap because it's very fast, it's very simple, and it creates this nice little knitting pattern as you can see here. And it's nicely tightly woven and looks really neat. The probably easier stitch to do is the E-Wrap, but the problem with the E-Wrap, this is what the E-Wrap looks like, is that you can see it's much, it's not as tight and so it doesn't create as neat of a ball. I've made balls with these, but I don't like them as well. The other two type of knit stitches are the True Knit and the Flat Knit. They also, they look similar to this. Um, they are generally can be tighter, but don't need to get into that. So to do the U-Wrap stitch, now remember we're skipping peg one here, so we're gonna start on peg two. You're gonna take your yarn and you're gonna wrap it all the way around to and then behind and then kind of hold it against the first peg. Now you don't need to be really hold it tight. You need to like, you just need to hold it snugly enough that this doesn't come off easy because you don't want to pull this off because then you you'll drop a stitch and you have to get it back on. And you can see this is called a U wrap because you can make a U. So then you grab the bottom yarn with your hook like that, pull it up and over. And you notice I push this yarn back down because you need space above. The more space you have above, the, the easier this will be. So let me show you that again. You're gonna take this, take the yarn in front of the peg, all the way around, hold it against the previous peg, grab your the loop on the peg, pull it up and over, push it back down, and you keep going like this. See how much fun this is? And you're gonna go all the way around. And while we're doing this, uh, I before you start to type a comment wondering how safe knitted toys are for cats, I'd like to assure you that in the writing of my book, I had made Probably, I've probably made thousands of toys. I have no idea. But I am also, I am a cat owner. I have four cats. I also am a foster. I foster cats. So I've had hundreds of cats and kittens through the past few years in my home. And they were kind of my test subjects. So I've really tested these toys to make sure that they don't come apart easily and that uh, they don't aren't something that are gonna be dangerous for cats. I've never had an issue. I do talk in my book about ways to make sure your toy is secure. The biggest thing concern you always should have is the ends, make sure the ends don't come undone. And that, the, you know, that the yarn that you're using is tough. Yarn is dangerous for cats. I'm not going to say anything different because yarn, they can get tangled in it and strangle or if they eat it, it can, you know, basically get bound up in their intestines and kill them. So if your cat ever eats yarn, you need to take it to the veterinary clinic Im immediately because it is something that is very dangerous. So secure your yarn when you're not knitting. Always, always, always. But the knitted toys themselves, I do recommend you monitor your cat for the first couple of times so you know how your cat is and you know how your toys are. But if you're at all concerned if your toys are secure enough, throw them in the washing machine with a load of laundry. This is my be all test because washing machines, I don't know what they do in there, but they're really tough on knitting. But I also recommend it, you can secure your knots that we make at the end with super glue as a, another way of securing them. Now, once you've made a once you've made a few rounds, you can actually take this off your peg and then tuck it through, and we're going to just keep knitting. And but you're going to keep doing this, and you're going to keep doing this until you get probably about an inch, two inches, inch and a half. I'm gonna say inch and a half. So two inches of knitting there. You want about an inch and a half to two inches.
All right, once you get about an inch and a half to two inches of knitted ball, if you, it's sometimes hard to see, but you can just kind of see how long this is, you're ready to stop. This is about, this is actually probably larger than I normally make. This is about two inches and about the size you want it to be. You take your yarn and you see I stopped on peg 12. It just, I do that out of habit. You take your yarn, you're gonna wrap it all the way around once and then uh, halfway approximately, it doesn't have to be exact, and cut off your yarn. That's as much yarn as you're going to need for this next step. Okay, now what you're going to do is, starting with peg one, you're gonna go from the top and go underneath and you're going to snag your yarn and pull it all the way through. So again, you go ahead and from the top, go grab and pull it through. And you do this for every peg all the way around. And this is called the gathered. Okay, so once we get back to eleven, twelve. Okay, so once you've done peg twelve, you need to go ahead and do peg one again. Let me see. I got it all the way around, and you can now take this off your pegs. Okay. And it's a good idea to just kind of pull your two ends, kind of, it just, it sets the stitches a little bit. You can kind of see which goes in that to like, see how like they're just kind of set. And this does actually make it slightly larger than when it comes off. And you can then kind of pull it like this to just get the stitches to line up and kind of set into, into place. And we are now going to close the ends up. Okay, we're gonna start by closing the beginning part and you know it's the beginning because you still have your little slip knot here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this ball inside out. And I do that because it's just easier to tie the knot and not have to tuck it in. Then, now you can close the ball just by pulling on this end, but I have found you get a neater end is if, okay, you figure out where the yarn is going through. So you know, you can see how this yarn is going around here. So now I wanna go grab one of these loops. See how they uh, this yarn is looping? And this is part of why I like using the Bernat Softy Chunky because you the var variation of the colors is very small. And so I can see one, row from the next easier. So I'm gonna grab this, just a couple of loops, you know, from this end so I can start pulling it tight from this end. And then I'm going to grab another loop a few rows down and pull it. And then I'll grab a loop here, pull it. Grab a loop here, and then you can kind of pull the end. And 
you don't worry about there's like a little bit of space there it's not going to matter and now you're going to tie a knot you're going to just kind of wrap it around your finger tuck it through and to get the knot as close to the end as you can want it's a great thing to do is just put your hook in there Do this on camera here and then kind of you can kind of use the hook to pull it tight and then just slip the hook off so you don't tie it too far but you're going to do this a couple of times and if you have a little space like that that's okay it's not going to matter you just tie a couple more knots i believe in the power of three here so Okay, then um, I go ahead and, and just kind of snip. I snip it long so that I always have extra, so it just, that way that I feel like it doesn't come off as easy. It'd be harder for this not to come back. And then I just flip this out so you can kind of see how it looks. All right, let's talk about filling this. Now I said you don't, don't need to buy anything. Plastic bag. We all have a bunch of these sitting around. This is a really great material to use because it's still, you can put it in there. You can even add catnip if you want and then add your ball or add your plastic bag and it's, your ball stays washable. Or you can use bits of cloth. Like if you have some like scrap fabric or you have an old t-shirt you want to cut up and an old pillowcase, you can use that. Do not use yarn because that can be come out and you don't want to be be dangerous or you can even get like polyfill if you have an old pillow cut it open take some of the polyfill out of there um but you don't have to go purchase polyfill just for this so take a plastic bag i will usually just kind of cut it into strips just make it a little bit more easier to use just kind of I'll just start stuffing it And then we're going to close this. You're, you're not gonna be able to stuff it as much as you want until you close this a little bit. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of grab the, the loops from the other side and start pulling it. And you can add a little bit more and you kind of see how much you want. Pull it tight. And now we're going to add, we're going to knot it again. And again, you can just kind of, I'll just kind of, I don't really pull on this, I kind of push the, the knot towards the end to get it as tight as I can. And then I like to do a couple extra knots just to be secure it. A little more knots, gotta keep. And the next one might be a little further down, but that's okay. I got my knot there. Pull it tight. All right. Then now you gotta do it at the end. So I will sometimes, depending on how I'm gonna do this, you can. Um, I'll trim it shorter a little bit. Now you can take the needle that was included and thread the yarn, which can be tricky. As I said, it can be tricky to get this. And then I did just kind of can be hard to poke it through like that and then just pull on this and then this other piece just if there's any sticking out the other thing you do is just kind of 
poke it with the needle or, or with your end and just kind of get that in. And voila, you're done. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed making your first knitted Paul. And if you did enjoy it, please pick up a copy of my book, Knitting for Kittens, where you learn how to make uh, 25 different cat toys. And a lot of them do build on the basic ball. So you've got that toy out of the way and you can learn some other ones. If you like this video, please like, subscribe. Uh, that way, the not only does it help other people find my videos, but it encourages me to make more. I hope you have fun making toys and enjoy your cats and have a good day.